All right, good morning everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. I hope you guys are doing well. Gonna be doing something a little different today. As you can see, I'm here at the Kennedy Space Center, but I'm not here doing any kind of a public tour. Uh, Robert and I have a friend who works here, works in these administrative buildings, uh, and she is gonna be taking us on a little backlot tour of NASA here at the Kennedy Space Center and uh, I'm going to be sharing some of that with you. Obviously there's some stuff that I can't film at or share but other things I will be glad to share it with you. Thanks for joining me guys. We'll be uploading this video with some Nomad Internet link below in the video description. Let's have fun at NASA today. Just driving in the car here. This is the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building. Uh, this is actually from the 60s. So this is a building that they used for NASA back in the day. It's still operational today. We're on the intersection here of that operations building. There's a little platform up there. Palm trees at Kennedy Space Center at KFC. KCS. <laughs> and uh, look, it's pretty old. Astronaut parking only from the 60s. Yeah. That's where they parked when they're going on their missions. So uh, the astronauts themselves, uh, this is where they stay. This is where their sleeping quarters are before they go up into space. You can see all the old stickers. Maybe you've seen those shots of them coming out this door and walking this way, uh, getting ready to uh, head up into space. This is the path that they took right through here. If you look over at this area here, this is a launch equipment test facility here, uh, kind of where they make sure that the rocket will connect uh, to the platforms and to all the arms and everything. Just just an area kind of to just test it out. It's kind of cool. Ooh, it's a oh, he's got something, something on there that looks That's a little toasty. The... All right, in the car here, we're heading closer to the VAB building, the, the vehicle assembly building there. It is a monster building, but you know, Usually we see it from afar over in Titusville at our little camping spot over there. It is a monster building as we get closer. Just so you know, it is one of the tallest buildings in the world by area. It covers eight acres. It's 525 feet tall and 518 feet wide. We're heading there right now. We're getting closer to it over there, but still pretty far away. That American flag on the left side there, that is the world's largest American flag. The stripes alone, you can drive a school bus down those stripes. So it's, it's pretty big. It's a monster building. All right, and here we can get pretty close to the VAB building here. Pretty close. We're not going to be going inside today because we're just kind of doing a, a driving around tour here. On the side over here, if you can see the gray right there, we can't see it from this exact point, but those are bifold doors that go all the way up that can open up as high as the NASA logo there. And there's part of the flag again. It's huge, really big. So now we got the side view of the VAB building and you can see the shutters, the doors that go all the way up to the top. Those all open up. They've got one open on the bottom of one and one open on the top of the other. Also, uh, there's, a, there's a vehicle. You can see some, some gravel right here and then grass and then more gravel. That's the vehicle the, that drives on there. You can see the tracks are over there. That's how they, they move the shuttle from the VAB out to the launch pad. So it's, it's massive. It's almost half the size of a football field to the other side over there. Don't see the crawler out today, but yeah, it's a, it's a big vehicle. Then uh, here we have the uh, SpaceX portion. They leased this out from NASA. So all those launches that we've been seeing from the island over there where we're camping at, uh, that's where they're doing it from. They got that water tower there for the water to soak the whole pad for when they use all the rocket fuel and everything. And there's the SpaceX building. That's pretty cool being out here so close. We're approaching another launch pad here. This is the one NASA just used for their Artemis launch. Um, some rumors that it may have damaged the launch pad, actually. And these three large antenna things here are here for in case there's a lightning strike so it won't hit the rocket and damage it. But uh, yeah, nothing going on out there today. I'm not sure if they're repairing it or what's going on. And also, so they detoured us around, but there's those crawler tracks that we saw earlier that just lead right up to the launch pad there. And you can see how it's elevated there as well with the water tower to drop the water and that's what creates the steam from underneath the rocket, you know, nitrogen and all that stuff. It's pretty cool being up this close. 
Uh, now we're out here at one of the launch pad areas. Uh, when I got my ticket and tried to see a launch that was scrubbed, we were we were not this close. We were way back over by the visitor center. Uh, but th this is like a whole bus area where they can drop you off at the bus loads. And then they got these bleachers right over the Banana Creek here. And uh, yeah, yeah, this would be really cool. This would be great. You got the main uh, launch pad right there for Artemis. You got Starlink right there. And uh, I'll bet it would be pretty quick from the time they launch to the time you hear something from these bleachers. Because it's not traveling nearly as far as it was where we, where we were camping over there. Huh. All right, guys, we're here in Mission Control, set to take place in the 60s. This will be interesting. Hanging out with my buddy Robert. Oh, yeah. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced. GPSS, verify go phone. DTSC, verify go phone. SRO, verify go phone. Verify go phone. Yellow, verify go phone. City Kiss Conference. Gosh. Holy cow. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. We got a command module here. And then, look at that rocket, guys. Look at this. Here in the vault, they have a return capsule on display with the three seats in there. That's pretty cool. Look at all the locks and mechanisms on the door. Jeez. So even though a lot of people think it's a hoax, there's one of the cameras how they could broadcast from the moon in 1969. Yeah, a little bigger than my GoPro. They've got a lunar module on display here. That's pretty cool. Look, they got they got Dish Network on there. And uh, I think that's a Starlink dish up there too, yeah. <laughs> Playing golf on the moon. Oh, that's awesome. They have an astro van on display where they would transport the astronauts from their quarters that we were at earlier uh, down the runway. 
think we can see in through one of these windows. Let's see here. There's another view from the back door here. Also, we can peek in. It's simple. I don't even see a bucket to poop in. Well, that's kind of cool. Like smoke from like Disney World. <laughs> nice. Wow. It was tight quarters in there. They're sitting on their backs, looking straight up to the sky as it takes off. Interesting. One thing I forgot to mention as we were doing our tour is they showed the uh, toothpick type thing that's on the top of this. If there was ever something wrong with the rockets, that could that could save them from this to separate from the main rocket boosters. But pretty cool. There's some moon rock you can go in here and touch. Oh yeah. Hey, I was touching it. Now we're talking space dog and some space fries and some space beer. <laughs> Pretty cool day out here. We got to see some stuff that other people don't get to see and we got to see some stuff that you see on the normal tour here at Cape Canaveral. A couple launches coming up here at the end of the month. February 26th they're doing a manned SpaceX launch. Yeah, a crew of four is going to the International Space Station. Beautiful day in Florida. It's always nice in Florida. Has it ever not been nice in Florida? Uh, it rained a couple times. Yeah, but not much, not much. All right, and then we got a Apollo monument here. Is this to the ones who died? No, this is the ones who landed on the moon. Collins, Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin. Heck yeah. And I got some souvenirs. I'll show you those when we get back to the RV and the kitties. All right, so my buddy Robert's taking a day off from working on a bus. He's going to be uh, working on my Harley. Decided that... Uh, I need something on my Harley, so what, what are we doing here? Stuff. Stuff. It's a secret. You gotta wait till the end of the video. Yeah. While he's working on the Harley, I'll uh, show you what I got at NASA here. Got yeah. me a new ball cap. <laughs> SpaceX on the front and the back. It's a fitted flex fit hat there. I also got a magnet. I've been to quite a few NASA related places, so I do have quite the collection of NASA magnets already. Went with this one. It's an astronaut says NASA on it. Pretty cool, unique looking magnet. Heck yeah. And as you probably also saw in that shot, yeah, I went with Viking bags again, but uh, a much different looking saddlebag. This is the swing arm bag that I was talking about that I couldn't find before. It's a very small, it would fit the camera I'm holding, you know, wallet, cell phone, registration, maybe a hoodie, sweater, and some gloves. And uh, this is gonna be side mounted but unfortunately it cannot be side mounted as is like that up against the shock because of that aftermarket plate cover that the previous owner put on so we're going to be removing this putting in some hardware right there to hold this so that floats away and then uh, we're going to be relocating the plate to where it was stock can't exactly do that as it is because the previous owner used a skill saw and cut the old license plate holder that was there. So luckily, eBay had an existing one, probably because somebody also did the same mod. They didn't want the existing license plate holder on the back, but I need it if I want to have the saddlebag. So we're putting it back to original, I guess, technically. Yeah. Heck yeah, you didn't know Robert works on Harleys too? I'm certified. <laughs> Look at that. That swing arm bag looks awesome. Again, it's made by Viking Bags. They make them for all sorts of bikes. This is more of a universal fit, but it works great with these Dynas and Softtails that have the exposed shock there. And uh, the color really closely matches the leather of the seat and uh, just looks great there. It's really low profile, but it'll fit lots of my stuff for uh, traveling. And it's hard mounted, secured, so it can't be cut and taken like the one in Vegas. And then Robert also got my new plate mount put on the stock version, which, you know, I'm not in love with the look, but I'm willing to sacrifice the coolness of the, the way it was for one saddlebag. And it can only be mounted on this side because it's meant for the driver's side right there. But yeah, coming along nicely. Thanks, buddy Robert. Yeah, buddy Eric. All right, back to camp here. Got to work on a few things with the tandem trailer, organize the inside of the RV and uh, load up the bike for, for transport here on the back. This, is, this has been a learning curve, understanding these dollies, how they work 
with the car and the wheels. Um, something I didn't realize at first was that uh, it's a little bit of a hassle to tow a car with the dolly system like that. Uh, I can do the front tow thing with the hitch and in less than a minute I can pretty much unhook it. I can put it together in probably two minutes but the front wheels on there is putting the straps on there. It's more like a 10 to 15 minute project to get it on the dolly. Again, this is just me being a little bit transparent with you. Um, it, it's possible that I may have bitten off a little more than I can chew with this. Uh, I really wanted a motorcycle for Florida, so, you know, will this bike be traveling all the way back to Arizona to my property? I don't know. I was thinking about storing it here in Florida, so I always have a motorcycle here. Something where I could just take the car, drop the car off, get on the bike. Always have a bike, but also still have the car, so stay tuned. I'm not leaving Florida until at least March, so uh, we got some time, but uh, going to be getting out of this area here. So, uh, man, NASA was fun. That was, thank you so, so much, Kay, for driving us around. That was, that was really neat to see some, some behind-the-scenes stuff of Kennedy Space Center. Awesome, and thank you for the sticker. Opie, where's your sister Tara? Is she sleeping? Well, you go ahead and sleep too. I'll go ahead and do all the hard work. You just sit there while dad organizes everything, okay? All right, all right. Hey, I'll see you in a few days, guys. Have a good one, bye-bye. <laughs>